In this video, we're going to be going over the frame and legs that we use for the uh, two kid homeschool uh, table that we built. Uh, so this is obviously uh, one of the parts of the three part series on how to build that table. Uh, so definitely stay tuned for that. Otherwise, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that bell notification icon for all of our newest videos and tool reviews. In the meantime, let's get to the build. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and cut our legs down, or our wood down, which is going to become our legs, down to 29 inches. So that way we have an average table height. So that'll actually make the table just a tiny bit shorter in this case, because of course it's for kids. So we want to make sure that we have a good table height for them. Uh, so I'll just make it a little bit shorter than you would probably make for an adult by about one inch. That includes the tabletop because that'll bring it to, after everything's said and done, it'll probably bring it to about 29 inches tall roughly, which is normal. That's good about 30 inches tall, give or take. Depends on who you buy it from in reality. So we'll go ahead and cut out this piece. Um, we'll do a little bit of math here, determine like how many legs we can get out of it. And if we need to, then we'll attack this piece and do it that way. And that's basically pretty much all that there is to it. So let's get started. All right. So for this part, uh, all we have to do to be able to go and make the actual leg itself. So obviously we got this big board, we obviously don't want to make a leg out of that. So all we have to do is just basically make sure that the board just kisses the blade. So you just kind of want to get in here, just real nice and close to it, and then move our fence to just, again, very lightly touch the side, not hard or anything like that. And then just lock it down. And then there you go. So when you do go to make the cut, uh, what'll happen is, is that the legs will be the equal size of the width of this. And that's all. Pretty simple. So we'll go and get to that here in just a moment. Okay, so we're getting down to the part where we're ready to go and uh, cut, cut these beautiful legs over here that are all ready to rock and roll. But before we do that, we do need to have something, and that is a template. I highly recommend making yourself a template. Now this is the size of the wood that I'm using, which is basically almost perfectly three quarter inch. If you do something that's a little bit different size, you make a different template out of the same stock that you're cutting your legs out of. And that's basically about how complicated this gets. So not too bad. So let's show how this actually works in real time. So when we're applying the template, we just basically want to make sure that it fits between our stop block and the blade itself. If you're looking here, you'll notice that the blade is just touching the correct part of the template, which in my case, I made a little boo-boo down here, so don't worry about that. But up here, this is the correct width. Now, if we flip this around, you'll notice it still fits. And what that means is that we're, for the most part, perfectly centered. So we can do the same thing with the legs, which just actually shortens the cutting process and makes this a lot more efficient when you can do that. And we also can use a single blade versus having to go and use a dado blade in order to be able to accomplish this type of a cut. If you're using a contractor saw like I am, which probably most of you are, you're probably not going to have enough room for a three-fourths inch dado blade. Just, I mean, you could do like a half inch, stuff like that on these, but once you start getting to three quarters, I mean, you're getting into some really, really gray waters. Technically, yes, you could do it, but I wouldn't recommend it. All that being said, we're going to go ahead and start our cuts, and then we'll uh, show you how this actually works in real time, and I think you're going to like it. So let's get started. Okay, so this is our leg. We're just going to go ahead and, again, butt this right up against our stop block. And then we'll just take our clamp. It doesn't have to be a big clamp. Just one of these little mini clamps will do just fine. Just kind of get that in there. There we go. And 
just press that down, make sure you don't do what I just did there. Okay, so now we got a good solid fit, so we're gonna cut. Okay, so we got these all taken care of. So now we have our general measurements. As you can tell on here, if you're looking, you'll actually see that we have now a little strange grid pattern that's now evolved on here. And uh, just by simply rotating it each time, we wind up going and cutting all the different lines because it's all centered. So now all we have to do is just remove the waste and we're effectively done. So not too bad, that's just basically reclamping it back onto here again, and then just moving our stop block over until we've removed all the waste. Probably use this little guy for safety, and that's about it. So we're ahead and get to that, and uh, then you guys will get to see the final product here in just a moment. Okay, so now we're going to ready to go ahead and do waste removal. Waste removal is actually pretty easy. Let me go ahead and show you what we're doing. Okay, so all we're doing really for waste removal is we just are moving our stop block a little to the right, Sorry, right. And uh, then we're just making sure that this is going over the saw kerf that we see here. This line here on this sled is perfectly aligned with the side of the tooth, so I get to rely on that. Yours might not be, so do keep that in mind. But anyway, that aside the fact. Uh, all we have to do is just run it through there, and then we just cut, cut, cut until we're all done, just moving the, this over a little bit at a time. And to make this a little bit easier, we're just gonna go and just swap out boards as we're going through the process and that should make it a lot faster. So, all right, we'll go and get started on that. All right, so as you can see here, uh, after we went ahead and just basically did the rounds one more time, we've cut out most of the waste out of here. And so we'll go ahead and do the additional boards and then we'll come through and then again, just move this over a little bit and then remove the waste. So if we come back, I'll show you how this looks in the end. All right, so we have them all cut down and uh, you can see that we are able to get the brace in here. These are not perfect joints. There was a little bit of deflection with the blade just in general. So that kind of threw off the quality of the cut a little bit. But of course, as we all know, if you want to be a woodworker, the best woodworkers learn how to fix their mistakes. They don't not make mistakes. So that's the thing. But uh, yeah, there's a little bit of play in here. So these are a little loose. Uh, probably could have done a little bit tighter. But ultimately, at the end of the day, when this does the glue up, you're not going to really notice because once you have the cross beam in, it's not a big deal. So um, as long as, you know, this is fairly tight, you should be good to go. So we'll go ahead and get on to that next. Okay, so we went ahead and drew out what about 50% roughly of the material would be on here. So this way we can get this lined up with our blade, which we in fact do have. So we got 50% um, cut 
got the lines of how far the little tower is on the uh, castle joint. So that's the distance from the edge to the beginning. And then this is our cut. So this is all we actually have to cut out. And then since we're putting a center brace on this, we did another one down, down, uh, down there. And that's basically about it. So pretty simple for the most part. Uh, so we'll go ahead and get this uh, cut out and then we will uh, move on to uh, rough assembly and uh, glue up. Yay. Okay, and the cuts are done. And now you can see kind of the general idea behind how it looks. So you can see there's a few little gaps in there where we kind of went a little overboard, but for the most part, I uh, went and fixed those up pretty good. These haven't been filled yet or anything, so just going to zoom in over there. Yeah, so that's looking really good here in the mock up or dry fit, if I we're gonna call it. So gotta go and do some uh, taper on the legs and then we're gonna do something special with the top before we get done. But that's the basics of how this table works. So this one should be pretty good and strong because the tabletop's not all that thick. Now, if you're gonna do something that's a little bit thicker, I'd probably recommend putting uh, a leg right here and here so that we had the extra stability. Uh, but since this thing is uh, only it's a little over three quarters thick. This should be just fine. So and we're going to do some stuff here probably to dress this up a little bit before we glue up. But uh, yeah, just wanted to show you guys how that looks and uh, how it's coming along. So there you go. Okay, so we're ready to go ahead and do the glue up. Just basically going to pretty much pull up each of these joints. Just put glue in there. Just make sure like when you're, if you're doing one of these, make sure you're really getting the glue inside the actual joints don't like kind of dab a little at the bottom and then call it a day just actually get all the way up all the way to the sides should be pretty much good to go so not really much to it so we're gonna go ahead and get started on that and uh if i get to watch us uh, play with a wobbly little thing for a little bit so let's get started all right so went ahead and got the uh Table frame all done, pull it out. I uh, got some sanding done on it and everything. All right, so this is what we got. As we can see here, it's not perfect, but uh, it's close enough. And, and really when you're building a project like this, remember close enough is about roughly where you want to get. You'll figure out the rest in kind of finishing up the details and whatnot. So we got a little bit of sanding in there. Uh, had a, a few of these that were just a little a little gappy gap going on, nothing really too big. Uh, went ahead and filled those in, got those nice and reinforced just to make sure. And uh, overall, looking really, really nice. All right, so we've got everything sprayed. Kind of give you a little preview here. So everything's sprayed, glued up, and looking good. So now, so now we've got to go ahead and get in the little adjusters here on the bottom. So before we connect this all together and everything, we want to definitely get that done. Um, so we'll go ahead and do that. Uh, as you can see, I went ahead and put uh, claws taped to each of the four points on here. This should give me enough leverage, in theory, to hopefully offset this wonky floor that I have down here and make this thing uh, lay gently on there. Technically speaking, since this is under the table, it doesn't matter if it gets scratched, but still, you want your stuff to look good. So, you yeah, know, take a little extra care. So I'll go ahead and flip this over. Thankfully, this isn't too terribly heavy, so that's kind of the good news on this. So I'll just take it like this. And honestly, if you can't flip your frame like this, it's probably not worth putting underneath the table. Um, so yeah, so I'll just go ahead and do this, do this, and 
This will keep your corners also from getting dented while you're flipping it over to actually go and put on your adjusters. So we'll go ahead and uh, get into the adjuster part here. Let's rock. So when we're going to go look for center on a table leg, especially if it's square like this one is, it's actually pretty simple to do. So we're just going to go ahead and take this little guy. If you know what this little guy is, you should get one because they're awesome. Now you could just use a regular ruler and do this too, but uh, realistically it doesn't really matter. The main thing is, is to make sure that you are corner to corner. And of course, this just makes that a little bit easier to do. We're just going to go boom, boom. Okay, so we got that X, that part of the X done. And then we'll go ahead and move this to where it needs to be. There we go. And that's it. That's your center. And that's all you have to do. So either you can do it with a straight edge ruler or you can do it with one of these. It doesn't really matter. Um, this just makes it a little bit easier because you got that little thing on there and you can do the 45 and there you go. But uh, yeah, so that's finding center. So when we go to drill, we're gonna drill right at that specific point right there, straight down. And then pretty much, yeah. Well, you'll see here in a second. All right, so now we got that squared away. We're gonna go ahead and uh, put in our little insert here. And then we're just gonna tap it right into place. I like using the rubber mallet because it keeps it from uh, marring it up as you're tapping it in. You can use a wooden block with a hammer too, and that works just as well. But yeah, that's in there nice and steady. That ain't going nowhere. So now we'll just go ahead and do all the other four and get that rocking. But just so this way you can see what it looks like with the foot put in place. There you go. That's about it. So not much to it. Putting in feet is super easy. Uh, it's just a matter of just uh, getting in there and doing the thing. Um, you know, keep in mind that your cordless drill may not always really meet the task of going into end grain. So, uh, you know, don't be disappointed if it doesn't. But that's uh, basically the whole process. So there you go. All right, so I'm going to get the rest of this done. Catch you guys in the next scene. Okay, so we're about ready to go ahead and install these, which are the tabletop fasteners. You can see they're pretty skinny. Basically, they fit into a slot on this side into the side of the railing and then this part here screws to the tabletop. Pretty simple. Um, but making the little spot for this is not always that simple. So you could use a chisel, you could use a domino if you actually can afford one of those. Or if you're like me and you're cheap, you got one of these little guys. This little when uh, uh, biscuit joiner that uh, we picked up for, I don't know, a few bucks. It's actually a pretty good little tool actually overall for biscuit joining. Um, but anyway, we're going to use that to go ahead and, and uh, cut out the divots in the table. We'll go ahead and show you how that's done right now. One, two, three. All right, so we got these all cut out and now we're looking good. As you can see, these just fit in here like this. And then basically when the table's on here, they just kind of lock in place and I'll keep the table uh, where it needs to be. So this makes it nice and easy to be able to attach a table and also gives a little bit of flexible movement as well. As we know, wood moves. So that's really about all there really is to it. It's a pretty simple process, especially if you've got one of those. Uh, if you're doing the chisel method, well, I wish you good luck because that's about as fun as it can possibly not get. Um, but otherwise, yeah, that's about it. So, all right. So you got a chance to go ahead and see how that's all put together. Came out really nice looking, didn't it? I liked it. Um, worked out pretty well. Little side note on there is, is that we did wind up adding one more leg uh, at the back middle of the table at the, uh, after the build was actually done. And this was because we wanted to give it a little bit of extra support. We noticed that 
by building it so thin, it did cause a little bit of sag. So you may want to go and build yours maybe a little bit thicker um, as far as the overall height of the uh, castle joint. Uh, you may want to get just a tiny bit thicker on that. Uh, that may have actually prevented it from doing that. The cross brace did a pretty good job on there, as you saw that built into the actual table array, but definitely that uh, fifth leg in the back uh, saved the table design and made it so it's a nice solid design. We've actually had that built now for probably about six months by the time you're seeing this video. So we've had a lot of time to see if it would actually truly fail. So uh, the cool thing is that was the only problem with it. So. Uh, I would say either if you're going to go that thin, either build that into your build or uh, just build it a little bit thicker on the frame rails. But I think probably putting that fifth leg in is probably going to be necessary with this type of a build just because it's designed to be kind of defying gravity in some senses and physics. So that's kind of the cool part that's doing something like this, right? But anyway, I digress. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification icon for all of our newest videos and tool reviews. In the meantime, stay safe in the shop.